Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next storyteller, Daryl McCormack. So last October, um, I got a call from my mum and uh, I was in college and I answered the phone and she says, Daryl, have you seen the comments made about you? And I said, no ma'am. And she so sounded quite worried and I said, relax, it's okay. And she goes, if you don't and you haven't seen them, please don't look at them. And I said, I'll be fine ma'am, don't worry, I'll be grand. And a few weeks prior to this, I had done my first professional acting job. And I was to do a two to three minute video of me urging young people of Ireland to come out and uh, vote for the referendum and the campaign. And um, it was two, three minutes, me speaking English and Irish, and I was really proud of it. Um, and when my mom was talking about, there was a Facebook thread of a picture of me, and uh, it was a comment section and it was up for people to discuss whether to vote yes or no. Unfortunately, a few people, very small amount of people, made some kind of comments about my skin color and kind of ju judging my nationality, basically. And I kind of didn't really feel affected. For some strange reason, I, I kind of felt I wasn't that affected. It didn't, do, didn't make me feel that bad. I kind of felt mostly embarrassed for the people that came up to me being like, I'm very sorry about that. I, I heard what happened. And I was like, you know, it's okay. The truth was my mom kind of felt a bit more affected than I was. Because she spent her whole life trying to get me to avoid this kind of thing where people would make kind of comments about my appearance. And she grew up in Nina and left when she was 21. And she met my dad in California. She went and she became a nanny over there for a summer. And he was only about 21 as well. He was a soldier in the American army. And they had their summer romance. And she became pregnant and she got very scared and came back to Ireland like the scared little girl she was and she gave birth. Um, so I grew up in Nina and I met my dad twice. I, I don't really know him that much, but for a man I've met twice, he has a massive effect on my life and an influence on my life just because of his color. And I remember growing up in Nina and a lot of, from what I remember was young kids my same age kind of looking at me and staring at me. And it, you know, it would be really prolonged stares, it kind of... <laughs> and I used to ask my mom, mom, why are these other kids staring at me? And she'd always come out with the answer, it's because you're so handsome. Yeah. <laughs> and a part of me, I didn't believe it fully. Um, <laughs> But I got to an age where I was a bit, I was kind of getting too older for she could keep saying that. Um, and I remember the first time I actually kind of encountered racism, one of the first times I remember, I was playing soccer in my green, in my local estate named Ryark Derrick. And I was playing with my cousins, and there was another guy who was also part of the estate but a different section, and he came out and played with us. And I was only about 11, and uh, we were playing soccer and I made a bad challenge and I clipped his, clipped his ankle, and he turned around to me and said, fuck off, you black bastard. And being 11, he, I think he was around 20, I was obviously <laughs> taken back by it. And I went home to my mom, and I told my mom, this guy called me a black bastard. And she goes, well, Daryl, you're gonna have to find a time where you can defend yourself, you know? I goes, but this guy was a lot older than me, you know? So she got up, and she goes, okay, where does he live? <laughs> so me, my uncle, and my mom went over to this guy's house. And this was at like 11 o'clock. And she knocks on the door. And the guy's dad comes out and my mom goes, where's your son? I'd like to have a word with him. And he gets, he gets his son and his son comes out and my mom goes, I would like you now to apologize to my son for what you called him earlier. And he apologized. And then my mom said, I just want you to know that my son will grow up to be a bigger man than your son will ever be. 
And I just remember walking away from the house, absolutely chuffed, just being like, go ma'am. <laughs> so we walked home, and because, you know, I just felt very good about it. About two years later, it was kind of another time where I experienced a bit of racial um, abuse. And I was walking through an estate called Cormac Drive, and Cormac Drive was kind of known to be a bit of a rough estate. And I used to walk through, and there used to be a particular kid called Stephen who used to kind of shout things at me. And, uh, you know, sometimes they were funny. Sometimes they were like, why don't you go back to Chocolate Town? You know? <laughs> and I'm like, you can do a bit better than that, Stephen, there. Come on. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, he, would, he would continually shout things at me. And it kind of made me confused, because I was kind of like, well, I feel the exact same as anyone else in this town. I, I grew up here. I played hurling. And it continued for quite a while. A few weeks went by. And, one particular time I was walking to school and I was coming up by the cinema and he came behind me and he was doing the same thing again. And I, I remembered the way my mom walked up to that door of your man's house and, and gave out to him. So I just stopped and I looked to the ground uh, to try and find something and all I could see was a chestnut. <laughs> so I picked up the chestnut and I, I turned back around I looked at him and I roared, fuck off and I threw the chestnut at him. <laughs> the best thing is I, I missed. <laughs> I didn't hit him. He kind of laughed at me, and I walked towards school. About two days later, who do I bump into as I'm crossing the road but Stephen? And he's crossing this way, and I'm crossing that way. And I'm kind of waiting here, and I'm like, I'm now about to get my head punched in. And I'm not a fighter at all. I've, I was reared by two mothers, my mum and my grandmother. So I have no mean streak in me. I can talk for Ireland. I can talk my way out of any situation. <laughs> but this time I felt like I was just going to have to suck it up. And he came over to me and he just put out his hand. And he said, I'm very sorry about what I said the other day. And I was kind of awkward because I was like, oh, I don't expect this. I'm still waiting for a punch to come up my face. But he just said, I'm sorry. And I said, it's all right. And, and don't get me wrong, growing up in Nina, I've had a great childhood, and it wasn't all doom and gloom, apart from these kind of two situations. I mean, I played hurling with Nina Rogue, my local hurling club. I felt like I was some sort of Sean Ogahalpeen. <laughs> and I remember when I was in school, uh, I got elected from my student, for the student president, and at the time, Barack Obama was elected the first black president. <laughs> <laughs> And everyone was like, Daryl, you're the first black president of Nina CBS. <laughs> and uh, um, But I was lucky because my mom was always there. As well as enjoying being different and standing out, there was a flip side. And my mom protected me from that flip side. And although she's a Facebook warrior, always messaged me, I'm only now starting to realize how grateful I am for that. And she gave me the space to allow me to just be myself and grow as a person, no matter what color. And I suppose I just want to say thank you, ma'am. <laughs>